at Lars. I know I've done a lot of videos on bearded dragons, but this guy is super special to me. You're going to want to stay tuned for this and remember to hit that subscribe button. So this is Aramis. Aramis is actually um, a very, very old guy. He is a little over 11 years old. Now, I got him from a pet store way back when. If you guys have watched our first video, you know what I'm talking about. I raised this guy from a baby and he and his predecessor, Athos, are part of the reason why the rescue got started. Now, because he's an old guy, he has old guy issues. So um, he has a little bit of issues with his legs, a little bit of swelling in his legs. He's got some arthritis, and I recently had to downgrade his enclosure. We were keeping Aramis in a 250-gallon enclosure. He had an absolute bearded dragon condominium in the sky. But because of his arthritis, he was not able to climb like he did, and he started spending all of his time at the bottom of that enclosure. Now, that 250-gallon enclosure was actually about two and a half feet tall. So when we're talking about bearded dragons and we're talking about what's right for them and what's not right for them, one of the biggest things is proximity to their UVB bulb. UVB bulbs only throw their UVB rays about 18 inches from the bulb. And because Aramis was not able to climb any longer, he was not actually getting to that UVB bulb. So I had to move him into a different enclosure that's a little bit smaller to make sure that he is within that 18 inches away from where he is supposed to be from that bulb. Now, I've actually been feeding Aramis a variety of things. Um, as soon as I got the enclosure right again for him, where he was within that 18 inches of his UVB bulb and he's a lot closer to heat, his metabolism started kicking in gear again. But one of the things that I'm doing because he's an old guy, I'm actually supplementing his diet with something. Um, it's actually a combination of an all natural pureed baby food, no artificial colors, no preservatives, no nothing. This stuff is just canned. And then I'm also combining that with some carnivore care. Now I do only give that to him once a week and that is just on top of the vegetables and on top of the bugs that I feed him because I want to keep him with me. He still uh, has a very, very big desire to live and be a bearded dragon. He's not showing any other signs of illness besides the arthritis in his legs which there's a lot of that that, you know, as a dragon ages, you just won't be able to get rid of. They're just like us. So I am actually going to demonstrate to you guys how I feed Aramis. I have never met another bearded dragon in my life that has been so eager to be syringe fed as this guy. So I've got my syringe here. Now, Aramis, on a weekly basis, he'll go through one to two of these syringes. You can pick these up at your local store. Um, whoa, buddy, whoa, buddy, hold up. So I'm doing a lot of talking with my hands right now and Aramis keeps looking at my fingernails thinking that it's maybe a snack for him. It's totally not. So you guys can see his interest right now. He, ah, yeah, okay. Aramis takes his syringe food like a champ. Rest assured, most bearded dragons are not going to be like this. So in most bearded dragons, what you're gonna do with the syringe, if you have to syringe feed, this will help you at home too. If you have, um, say you've had a, an appointment with the vet, and the veterinarian says that you have to syringe feed your dragon. Maybe you're doing something like treating for a coccidia. Uh, it's really, really not that hard to syringe feed a bearded dragon. Now, if Aramis was not so eager, uh, I would be pushing the syringe 
just very lightly just on the bottom of his lip this is what i have found that does not injure your dragon and that also will allow you to get the medicine the food whatever you're trying to give the bearded dragons inside of them without hurting them so it's really just imagine that my finger is a syringe okay so I'm going to act like I am an angry bearded dragon who does not want to eat anything from a syringe. So I'm just going to take the syringe and see how I just pulled my lip forward. That's the exact same thing that you're going to do with your bearded dragon. You have to be very careful that uh, you don't break any teeth, that you're not really forceful in my experience. Just pushing the syringe down onto the lower lip very gently is very successful, but you really have to know what you're doing in order to do it. If you're, if you're feeling like it's too forceful, um, something else that you can add to the syringe, he is really excited for this. So another thing that you can do, if for some reason just taking the syringe and just pushing down on the lower lip isn't helping, you can hold a bearded dragon very lightly by either side of the jaw. Now, Aramis isn't gonna like this. I'm partially blocking off his ears and he's the kind of dragon that always wants to know what's going on. But you would, for example, just he's gonna get really eager about this. He doesn't need any help. But you would very gently just push in on the sides of the jaw while, are you going to demonstrate for me? You're actually going to do this? We're going to push in on just the very sides of the jaw. He's going to be a little squirmy because I normally don't have to do this. And then um, you're going to very gently go ahead with that syringe again on the lower lip. You're going to go just with the edge of the syringe, just on uh, the interior here so that you've got the syringe kind of against the lower lip. Come here, buddy. Can you open your mouth? And it's just like that. So I've got the syringe in, and now I'm gonna give him some of his food. <laughs> Can I have that? <laughs> Can I have that? <laughs> Now, Aramis, I don't have to ask him twice to take food from a syringe. Um, so other things that I am doing to make sure that Aramis is supported in his later years, I make sure that I am varying his diet. He has always been the kind of dragon that gets really, really sick and tired of getting the same thing. So if I were to give him dandelion greens every single day, for even a week, he would start refusing to finish those dandelion greens. So the key to a really healthy dragon, mix it up. Mix it up with your greens, mix it up with the other vegetables that you add in. Definitely mix up the bugs. You can keep them really entertained by providing a very wide variety. So a couple of things about the mixture that I am giving Aramis via syringe. First thing is that I look for all vegetable mixtures. So I'm looking for the same type of healthy fresh vegetables that I would be feeding him if he were eating normally all of the time. So I'm looking for things with carrots and sweet potato. I will use like a butternut squash, green beans, peas. Peas is one of those foods though that you want to make sure you're not feeding a lot because it can actually, because of oxalates, again, it can be really detrimental to their bones and their bone strength. So another thing um, that I'm doing when I put carnivore care in there is I'm providing some really healthy protein for this guy. Really, really important for a dragon like this in the later stages of life. And the third thing, and the thing that is probably most beneficial about syringe feeding Aramis in addition to the rest of his diet, it's actually getting him a lot of moisture. Now you guys might be seeing here that Aramis has a little bit of thinning going on in his tail. He's got slight depletion of his fat pockets on his head. 
and um, he's not really the weight that he is supposed to be. So I am trying to assist and make sure that he can keep being a really happy, healthy dragon. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this week's video. I hope you learned a couple of things and enjoyed. And if you guys ever have any questions about any reptiles or birds, definitely feel free to shoot a message out to us on Facebook or via email. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day.